Um, congratulations, everyone here uh, for being admitted into the EECS and MENG program. Um, it's you know quite the achievement. We had over 2,000 applications this year. Um, so you know, we're really excited to see you in the fall. Um, this is just a brief overview of some of the folks that you'll come in contact uh, with over the course of the year. Um, like I said, my name's Michael. Um, I'm the EECS Master's Program Advisor here in the EECS Department. Um, and your main contact for any sort of questions, issues that you might have uh, with regards to the MEng program. Joining us today, we have um, Professor Marat Artak and then um, Professor Alvin Chung, who are our co-vice chairs for the EECS master's degree programs. Um, they oversee, along with me, uh, you know, any of the program policies or any issues that might arise. Um, my Colleague and supervisor Shirley uh, Solano is the director of Graduate Matters, and she serves as my backup if um, you know you can't reach me. Um, and then in the row below us, uh, we have uh, our colleagues over at the Fung Institute, who you may have um, received some information from already uh, through emails. Uh, Julie is um, in charge of professional development. Um, she'll you know give you resources with regards to uh, industry and uh, job fairs and, you know, just kind of like um, the market conditions out there and, and just a lot of advice with regards to that. Claire um, is our student services and capstone advisor. Um, Bradley is the director of uh, student affairs. And then um, Jennifer is uh, in charge of capstones and um, capstone projects, the capstone fair that we'll talk a little bit about today. So um, without further ado, diving right into uh, some announcements. Um, you all should have received an official offer letter from our graduate division's office. If you have not for any reason, please contact me. Um, the next thing is that the statement of intent to register deadline is April 15th. However, if you need more time, just let me know. Uh, once again, my email is up there. Recipients of the Fung Institute Merit and Opportunity Fellowships for our department have all been notified. Uh, if you have not been selected at this time, you can still add yourself to the grant waiting list, and I've included a link on this slide. So I'll share this slide as well as um, the recording will be shared to folks who couldn't make it today. So a brief overview of our program structure. Um, essentially, it's between the department, EECS, and also the Fung Institute with regards to coursework uh, and then um, oversight on the capstone project. <clears throat> so um, the meat is your technical coursework, and um, it's going to consist of um, four technical courses, and that's um, going to include, uh, basically be from a list of um, approved courses uh, depending on your concentration. Um, and then the rest of the units would be your um, entrepreneurial leadership courses through the Fung Institute. And finally, there's a capstone project, uh, which is a team of students. And um, it's usually either a um, industry-led or faculty-led project. Um, and so that gives you uh, kind of, you know, that whole, um, research and uh, kind of team building experience that uh, is unique to the MEng program. So this is kind of the fall and spring breakdown. The MEng program is designed as a two semester, one year professional degree. Um, and so in the fall, you will be coming in a little bit early to start the boot camp as well as the spring semester I believe that um, fall instruction begins formally August 24th, but boot camp is slightly earlier than that. Um, here listed, it's August 9th through 18th. Um, so, like I mentioned, this is just a little bit of a, a infographic. Uh, the two technical courses per semester, plus your leadership coursework, plus the capstone. Um, and so that is the breakdown per semester. 
So I have some information with regards to our technical coursework. And I also um, just wanted to make a quick segue. If you have any questions, um, put them in the chat right now, or uh, I'll have some time at the end where um, I'm addressing any any sort of um, questions that folks might have, and, and we'll go over those. Um, so back to the technical coursework, uh, we require four courses, two per semester. And um, on top of that, three of those technical electives have to be from your admitted area of concentration. Um, we will provide lists for each concentration of approved uh, graduate courses within the EECS department. And um, you'll have, you know, a choice to choose from those. Um, the last class, uh, if you do choose, can be outside of your concentration within the EECS department, or it could be um, through a petition process a course that is outside of our department um, subject to the approval of that department um, that you're interested in. Uh, and also, you know, depending on whether or not um, it's relevant. And so that's what the petition's for. But a minimum of three classes have to be taken from your area of concentration. Um, these classes are graduate level, so that means 200 level and above uh, within the EECS department. Additionally, we do have a condition where you must maintain a 3.5 GPA for the technical electives, uh, and then a minimum of a 3.0 GPA overall. So the capstone project, uh, you've probably heard a lot, um, but uh, we are part of the capstone marketplace. And so what that means is, that there will be both EECS led and industry led collaborative projects to choose from for our admits. Um, they will be looking for students, you know, from specific areas of concentration or specific departments. And, um, you know, those uh, capstone uh, advisors will list that. Um, and so um, this marketplace usually occurs during the month of August um, and it's uh, coordinated by the Fung Institute. So teams usually consist of around three to six MNG students and they could be you know either from one department or if it's interdisciplinary they'll be from you know maybe several departments but um, it's a collaborative work uh, you know you're going to take on a research project um, and the scope is for this year and um, you know, there's uh, going to be a timeline of deliverables and, and uh, a report that you produce at the end, along with um, a uh, technical comprehensive exam from the department. And um, what that is, it's typically um, like, um, I would say, uh, um, a presentation, uh, but more technical presentation. Um, so I wanted to address a couple of the um, frequently asked questions that we receive um, from admits around this time of the year. Um, and, uh, you know, while I'm doing this, please submit any questions that you might have in the chat as well. Uh, but um, I'll just go down this list first, and then I'll take any questions. And then if you have any questions regarding the content that I covered today, um, it's pretty uh, brief, but um, I just want to give you kind of just a intro flavor to the MNG program. So um, will there be an opportunity for any third semester extensions? Um, in the previous couple of years, it's true that we did have uh, during the pandemic um, third semester extensions uh, for that reason. Um, but the intent was and always has been to end that pandemic exception. And um, since we're returning back to a relative state of normalcy, that means we're back to our normal policies. So there is no plan to offer an extension option for the EXMNG program for the foreseeable future. How do technical course enrollments work? Will I be allowed to take undergraduate EX coursework? The EXMNG course list will be sent out by me in early July and mid-October for the fall and spring terms, respectively. Um, they're a subset of grad of our graduate course 
offerings for each semester that we've um, vetted and reviewed for their appropriateness towards um, our MEng graduate students. And um, we'll also be providing recommendations and um, required technical courses for each concentration. So um, like I mentioned before, you are expected to take two uh, technical courses per semester. And three of those must be from the concentration that um, you are admitted to. Um, with regards to undergraduate EECS coursework, our EECS undergraduate classes are heavily impacted by our um, undergraduate student populations. And so far, they're limited to those um, students only. And so you will not be able to enroll into them. Next question, can I take additional technical coursework beyond the two required each semester? Yes, you certainly can, but um, in general, uh, we just offer precaution um, towards that. Berkeley graduate coursework is really rigorous. Um, you also have the leadership coursework as well as your capstone research um, deliverables to kind of juggle with. So um, from my experience, and I've been in this role for seven years, um, there's always students who end up oversubscribing in classes. And um, what happens is they tend to not do as well because they're spread th thin over, you know, uh, three classes. Um, and, um, you know, that puts them in jeopardy of graduating because we have that 3.5 GPA, um, cumulative GPA for technical coursework. Um, and so, you know, I, I do highly recommend, at least in the fall semester, while you're still kind of getting acclimated to, um, you know, the Berkeley environment to um, stick to two, uh, but it's up to you, um, obviously. Um, you're also subject to kind of the space constraints. If you already have your two kind of required classes that you're enrolled in, then, um, you know, if there's kind of constraints with regards to limited space in certain classes, then you might not be able to take the third class. But um, again, you can always talk to me about your, your plans. Um, the last question that I get a lot are, um, can I look for research opportunities outside of my capstone project? And, um, you know, does this continue on to a PhD program? So the exam Eng degree is designed as a terminal master's degree, uh, meaning it's not meant as a stepping stone towards pursuing a PhD program. Um, this is a one-year professional degree geared towards entering the industry. Um, so with that said, um, we do also discourage taking on research obligations outside of your assigned capstone project, um, given, you know, the short length of the program and your kind of obligations to the MNG program and um, its strict graduation requirements. So, um, yeah, I think it's been very rare in the past for anyone to um, move on towards a PhD program, you would be required to apply again, um, if you're interested in our EECS PhD program. Um, but again, I think, um, you know, you're all here primarily to, you know, get some deeper knowledge within uh, cer certain subject matters, um, get a flavor of research, and then um, transition into industry. So this is not kind of a common trajectory for, for a lot of folks, but I did want to address that. Um, so getting a couple of questions in the chat. Uh, so I'll cover that. And then, um, yeah, go from there. So the first question, I think I just answered it. Um, if you are wondering if you can contact a professor from the EECS department and join their lab as a research assistant during your OPT after graduation. Um, yeah, I mean, that's a little different from what I just mentioned, I guess. Um, a research assistant position, I think, is a paid position. It doesn't require your student status. And, and if you're interested in that, like, I think maybe what would make the most sense is to, if, you know, you're interested in the faculty, to see if they're offering a capstone project or or use your capstone project as a kind of a you know um, a starting point to create that um, opportunity 
um, seeking outside of that, I think it'd be kind of uh, difficult and take up a lot of time um, and, and kind of steer away from, you know, the point of the MENG program. But um, next question. Uh, maybe I'll jo jump in here. I, I don't sure. really see a mechanism to hire a student who has graduated with, with their OPT. I don't know what category of employment that would be in, in Berkeley. Okay. So that's a good I, point too. Yeah, I mean, I, I really don't know how I would if even if I want a student, I, I don't know how, how I would hire one with their OPT in what role, because they are not enrolled at that point. I think it might be a research engineer. Yeah. Let me just say this is very unlikely scenario. Okay. Maybe there is a way, but if you're thinking that you'll come to Berkeley because of that, <laughs> no, that's not a good good way to. Uh, come. Thanks, Marat. Um, next question is, I come from an electrical engineering background, and I'm looking to transition to a more computer science focused field. With that in mind, I'm curious to know if four technical courses are sufficient uh, to gain a strong background in data science and systems. Uh, assuming that you were admitted into data science and systems, then you are required to take, you know, classwork within that area um and i believe that you know our coursework is well uh, is is you know going to prepare you well uh i think maybe alvin you can talk a little bit more about this um question yeah i think we are not expecting students to already have extensive background in data science before joining the program. I mean, if you have already done that, then I don't think this program is worthwhile of your time. So there is going to be some uh, gap between uh, your undergrad background and also the coursework that we will be uh, offering. So that's that, right? So since you guys will be graduate students, so part of the deal is also like expecting you guys to also learn how to learn, right? So, you know, we're expecting you to be able to also pick up knowledge as needed. So not just uh, signing up for classes, but you can also learn uh, the background or whatever that you need elsewhere as well, right? So that's also part of the goal of the program. So yes, I mean, so we are we are not expecting you to already have a lot of extensive uh, data science background, um, but uh, in the meantime, we do ask you to kind of learn some of that, some of the background knowledge if needed uh, on your own as well. Thanks, Alvin. Um, all right, so next question. Can we see past Capstone Marketplace uh, projects? Oh, perfect. Bradley is joining us. Um, so yeah, Bradley just shared uh, a website where, uh, you know, maybe we have a, a past comprehensive list of those Capstone projects. Um, uh, it's Ashley, actually, thanks. Oh, yeah. <clears throat> um, and then um, last question. Is there a rough list of allowed technical courses for 2023, 24? I can refer to now. Um, so I, we don't have a list because they're, uh, well, it'll be released in the summer um, for fall and then mid October for spring. So um, I think the way that kind of course offerings per semester work is they're uh, figured out, you know, a few months in advance. And so right now we're only kind of aware of what the fall coursework will be like, but I can certainly share with you our prior year's um, course offerings so you can get kind of a sense of what's going to be offered. Um, and, you know, from year to year, it changes slightly, uh, but um, the baseline classes should be about the same. So I can definitely share that uh that list with you if you're interested any other questions yeah but please keep in mind that some of these courses do change so um, it's not like we're going to be offering exactly the same number although like that has been roughly the ballpark of what we have been able to offer in the past All right, so I just wanted to cover a couple of important dates that are, um, you know, going to be coming up in the summer. 
um, that should be aware of. Uh, so once again, the SR deadline is April 15th. If you do, do need some more time, please let me know. Um, that is a soft deadline. And then um, July 16th is uh, when course enrollment begins uh, via your um, student uh, um, login or through Cal Central. So, um, you know, before then, we'll be releasing the course offerings and the lists for each area um, and sharing that with our incoming students. August 7th through 8th is the new student orientation. Um, we will have another orientation session to cover some of the program uh, details that, um, you know, are um, including like the technical comprehensive exam I mentioned earlier uh, that we didn't kind of dive into today. Um, and then August 9th through 18th is the fall boot camp. Uh, so that's required for everyone. If for any reason you can't make it in person, um, coordinate with the Fung Institute. I believe there are some limited online options. But we do um, expect this upcoming year to be fully on ground in person. And so that uh, means you should you know, make uh, plans accordingly to be here. Uh, by then. Um, in August, the Capstone Information Fair and the Marketplace uh, take place, and that's when our Capstone projects will be um, released and um, folks will be able to, you know, um, try to uh, get into the ones that they want and get matched. Um, I see a few more questions. So, uh, I'll take a look at those right now. Can we enroll in more courses than we're intending and drop courses before the actual semester starts? Um, I strongly discourage that uh, it's, you know, shopping and dropping. In other words, um, you're taking up more spots than what you're intending to. Um, I think I would uh, really stress that you should pick courses that you're interested in um, and you know, we'll, in those course offerings, lists, uh, you know, provide notes, provide information, you'll take a, you'll be able to take a look at the, um, you know, the syllabus or may, maybe access the past course websites. So it, you can make an informed decision on what your enrollments would be for this um, upcoming semester. And so um, I, I would discourage that sort of enrollment behavior because um, you're taking spots from your fellow classmates. Um, and if you're not intending to, you know, take those classes, uh, then I'd leave those spots open. Um, for DSS specialization, will someone with an undergraduate degree in CS and industry experience in software development have enough rigor for technical electives? Um, I think Alvin mentioned this already. Uh, there is understood to be, you know, a bit of a gap between your undergraduate education and um, what... Um, our graduate coursework is um, going to set you up for. Um, with that said, we do have um, what's called mezzanine courses that we strongly recommend for all of our incoming MN students, and especially in the DSS area. Um, that will help you ramp up in the fall and give you the tools and knowledge um, uh, to do well in more advanced classes in the spring. So um, for instance, Intro to Machine Learning, CS289 is a great course. Um, CS200, which is Intro to Data Science, is another great class that I highly recommend. Alvin, do you have any other classes that you might suggest? No, I think those two are great. So one other thing is also that if uh, I suppose we have, will be talk, will be sharing with students the list of classes from previous years. So if that's the case, then you guys should also take a look at the class websites. I mean, they're all public and take a look at the kind of topics that, that are covered. And then you can also decide for yourself whether that's something that you feel like you'll be able to, to take. All right. Um, do students eventually go and do a PhD anywhere? If so, how often does this happen? What if the graduation requirement was not met at the time of graduation? 
So I think I answered the first part of, uh, or the first question already. So um, I won't cover that again, but if um, graduation requirements are not met at the time of graduation, what happens? Uh, well, there have to be some extenuating circumstances that led to that. And um, assumedly you would, you know, we would already have you on the radar if you're, if you're um, not meeting graduation requirements. Um, and so, um, depending on the circumstances, if it is an extenuating circumstance, you know, we're talking about uh, health related or um, something beyond your control, um, then potentially, you know, we could talk about uh, an extension for those um, unique circumstances. But um, for all intents and purposes, uh, we do expect people to, to graduate on time. Um, can you pr please share the link of the Fung Fellowship waiting list? Um, so yeah, it's, I'll share the, uh, oh, you want me to share it in the chat? Sure, let me see if I can do that. I'm not sure if that's the right link. Hopefully it is. It's a very long URL. Um, all right. Let's see. Um, I was wondering if EECS MN students were able to work as GSIs for courses. If so, is this common? Um, it is uncommon. Uh, again, I did mention, you know, you have a full uh, workload between classes and uh, research and so um, I don't really recommend stretching thin and um, taking on a uh, graduate student instructor position um, and so you know Alvin and Rod you guys can talk a little bit more about this if you know you have any insight or, or comments about this question Yeah, I agree with Michael. I think with the course load and the uh, capstone project is, should be taking up pretty much a lot of your time already. So I think I would also advise against taking a TA position at the at the same time because that would also that would be like a lot of work getting piled up in that. I think the answer is at your own risk. It is a it is a very packed program as it is. Um, I'll take one more question, but I think we we do have um, Professor Anthony Joseph here uh, to share some uh, words with us today as well. Uh, so I'll take one more question and um, I'll let Anthony speak. So um, one more. Can we take extra courses outside of engineering, for example, from the business school? Oh, well, thank you, Ashley. She's been answering some of these questions already. So I think that's already done. So um, and then without further ado, uh, Anthony... Thanks for joining us this morning, uh, and yeah, go for it. Yeah, I, I just wanted to congratulate everyone in getting into our, our program here at uh, Berkeley. Um, you really are going to have a unique opportunity through this program to engage both in learning, extending your technical learning, but also uh, doing the capstones and engaging in experiential learning, and then uh, also taking our, our leadership courses and learning how to be the next generation of engineering leaders. So I think, um, you know, if there are any other questions that are more specific to the program as a whole, I'd be happy to, to answer those uh, questions. Thank you. Yeah, so if anything wasn't addressed uh, today or if you have specific kind of questions, um, that uh, are you know specific to you, um, feel free to email me directly and um, we'll correspond uh, and I'll do my best to try to answer those. Any other questions?
Um, please do check out the student highlights links. Um, unfortunately, I uh, was not able to get uh, student panelists. They they got COVID <laughs> and so I had to back out. Um, but um, yeah, I I uh, invite you to take a look at these links. Um, they're um, some great students of ours in uh, current class and a prior uh, cohort. And so um, in addition to that, I believe we do have some student ambassadors that you can talk to as well. Or if you want to get in touch with some alumni, feel free to email me and I can get you in touch with those folks as well uh, and have them share some of their experiences with you about the MEng program and um, how they're doing in industry today. So um, I think I have a couple more questions. Uh, are there any steps you all recommend for us to do in the summer to hit the ground running? Um, stay on top of the announcements that we send out. Uh, I will be sharing information, you know, about our course offerings. Um, if you have any questions, uh, feel free to email me. Um, I think with regards to anything else, I think you're pretty much set for now. Um, have a nice little break, <laughs> enjoy, and then hopefully we'll see you in the fall. Uh, Marat or Alvin, do you guys have any recommendations? I mean, it would have to be specific. Um, if you have any, if you feel you have any deficiency in your background in whatever area that you think will be important in the master's program, this may be a good time to review. But like Michael said, once the program starts, it will be relentless for some nine months or more. So you also don't want to exhaust yourself before you start that marathon. Yeah, I agree. So um, maybe check out the course offerings and then think about like what you might want to take, right? And then pretty soon before you know it, like, you know, you're basically signing up for capstone projects and then getting the ground running already. So make sure you take a break before then. All right. Well, thank you, everyone. Um, and I'll share this recording with those folks who uh, weren't able to make it today, but uh, we we'll hope to see you in the fall. That's one final question, I guess, Michael. Oh, um, when will the Fung Fellowship waiting list be released? Um, I think the Fung Institute will announce those, right? So um, probably coordinate with, I'm, or maybe the form says itself, but I'm not sure, but they will definitely release decisions to uh, recipients. All right, thank you everyone, um, take care. Oh, and then someone asked if we can share the list of previous technical courses. Yeah, I'll do that. Yeah. I'll share that up for sure. Okay, take care, bye. Thank you everyone.